Hi friends, welcome back to another Christmas polar animals tutorial. Today let's paint a polar bear wearing a Santa hat. For your supplies, you'll just need 100% cotton watercolor paper for best results. I'm using a couple of brushes, my silver black velvet size four and eight round brushes. I have moon glow on my palette for the background and I'm gonna be using my Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White. For your other colors, you'll really just need a gray, a red, a blue, and a yellow. All right, I'm starting by sketching on the polar bear. I like to start with sort of an envelope shape just showing the overall shape of the animal before going into any details. From there, I will sketch on the center line and the shadow shape, and then I'll go in and begin tightening up the outer dimensions of the polar bear. I'm adding the nose and the mouth and tightening up the ears using stronger pencil marks now that I'm more confident with the overall size and shape of the polar bear. You can add the eyes. Make sure to include the Santa hat if you want it to be a Christmas card. It can be a little different from the reference photo, which of course I just photoshopped the Santa hat onto the polar bear and so you can make it any shape you want. From there, I'm adding the eyes and some of the little details of the face that are gonna be important when I'm painting the shadow tones with the watercolor. You really wanna just get enough information down so that you can get started with paint. Don't go overboard with your sketch. If you include too much detail, it's all gonna show up underneath your paint, especially since we're working on a white animal. So just add the pertinent details like claws, the separation of the feet, that one little foot coming in between his two front feet, the shape of his overall body is going to be really important. We're going to separate him from the background by using a darker color. It'll help him stand out and come forward in space. So I'm starting with clean water and swirling it around inside of the body of the polar bear. I do like to start with a wet and wet technique when I'm painting white fur because it really helps the colors to soften out and blend smoothly. I'm beginning with indigo as my first color, quite watered down, and just painting in all of the areas that are in shadow within the polar bear's fur particularly this dark patch of fur underneath his head, and then showing the separations between the legs. I'm using more of a watered down version of the indigo and removing any excess water on my paper towel to paint some of these lighter shadows around the legs and around the haunches on the back. You can see he's already starting to look much more three-dimensional with these additions of just a light gray is all we have so far. While the paper's still wet, you can even begin dropping in darker color. I'm introducing transparent brown oxide to mix in with the blue to make it a little bit more of a neutral tone, slightly more brown at the bottom of the animal's body. The strongest and darkest shadows, of course, are gonna be here at the bottom where the body is meeting the ground. You can also begin to start adding fur texture and paint a darker separation between those two front legs. Make sure to remove any excess paint and to adjust your values by removing your paint on your paper towel to go to a lighter value and continue this strategy as you move from dark to light. Where you paint dark, remove some of the paint, go back in with more of a midtone and continue re removing paint to get lighter values. I'm now mixing up some yellow, some brown, a little bit of the red. What I'm going for here is kind of a tan tone, or more of a peachy tone for some of the areas along the bottom of the polar bear's feet and body. In most polar bear pictures that you see, you'll see lots of color, not just white. That's because white fur tends to pick up and reflect all the colors around it. So whenever you're painting a white animal, keep that in mind that you're gonna be looking for a lot of other colors besides white. So with that tan, I'm painting over the feet and starting to help carve out the shape of the legs and the top of the back. Make sure that you spread a brighter color like this all around the painting for good color harmony throughout. I'm introducing that same color into the head a little bit and even painting over the top of the shadow. Now I'm going back in with indigo again. This time I've switched to my smaller size four round brush and I'm painting the tiny details like the eyes and the nose. I'm trying to leave a little highlight in the eyes and underneath each nostril, you'll see that often that's an area that catches the light and really helps the nose look more realistic. You can paint more of a smile on the mouth than what you're seeing in the reference photo. That will really help it look like a cute little Christmas character. And then for the top of the nose, remove most of the paint from your brush so you just have a tinted wash of your indigo so that the top of the nose appears to be turning up towards the light. And with this lighter value on your brush, you can paint some of the details of the snout Continue removing paint, especially as you're working your way from shadow into the light. This is just a process of adjusting your values by adding more water. Here I'm darkening underneath the neck and adding a few fur texture details. I'm mixing up some more of my transparent brown oxide and indigo and darkening the center crease of the body one more time. 
I'm also painting the little pads of the paws using pretty much pure indigo here. You can also use lamp black or whatever dark color you have on your palette. Payne's gray works really well for this too. I'm darkening the shadow in the center of the body and adding some fur texture, negative painting some of those fur shapes along the legs. I'm also adding one little shadow underneath the body and then just adjusting my values so I have a lighter gray on my brush and using that to apply some texture into the fur. We want our polar bear to appear that he has long shaggy fur and so you can use a dry brush or scraping technique where you run your brush across the surface of the paper while it's dry so that your brush catches on the texture and picks up some of those little peaks and valleys in the paper, providing effortless texture for your painting. Here I'm just kind of smashing my brush down sideways to paint the texture along the leg and along the side of the back. And then more manually painting some fur texture, showing the creases of fur along the legs. Now for the hat. I'm just dipping into my pure red and painting the top of the hat. Just avoiding the white portion, of course. It's really like just coloring in a coloring book here. And then I've dipped back into my light blue or light gray and I'm painting a shadow tone. Very light, very conservative underneath the hat. And then adding some final, very light mid-tone details to the face of the polar bear underneath the ear and along the face. All right, with the polar bear finished, we can move on to the background. Now I'm using my Moon Glow. This is a wonderful three pigment tone by Daniel Smith. If you don't have this color, of course, do not worry. Just use whatever beautiful background color you want to use that looks Christmassy to you or holiday. I'm starting by pre-wetting the background with a different brush and then grabbing my loaded up brush with Moon Glow, painting the ground underneath the polar bear using nice, loose, brushy strokes allowing my brush to miss some of the white of the paper as well so that it looks like snow texture. And then I'm working more carefully along the edges of the polar bear's body. I don't want it to interrupt any of that red paint and cause it to bleed out into the background. So do be careful when you're painting right up next to details where you don't want the paint to run. If you're having a hard time getting all of those edges perfect, you can always twist your board around upside down to get a better grip. And because I'm right-handed, this really helps me get those edges much more accurately than if I was trying to work around them right side up. So once you have a nice, loose, brushy background with color, while it's still wet, this is a great opportunity to add some blooms. So just take your brush with clean water on it and gently touch the surface of your damp paper and watch the paint just push aside and explode. This is one of my favorite things to do with Moon Glow because you can see all of that pigment in its different forms coming through. My last detail is to add Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White and I'm using a tiny little liner brush and just painting on individual dots of snow. Make sure that you have some snow coming in front of your polar bear so that it appears that he's sitting in a flurry and that it's not just snowing behind him. Add as much snow as you would like and vary the sizes of your snowflakes. They should be all different sizes, not just the same uniform size. And add a little bit of snow underneath the bear if you wish. You can also use white gouache or acrylic paint for this technique. So there's the finished polar bear. You guys can see just how fun that turned out with the moon glow, the three pigment separation there and the snowflakes. If you guys decide to try this, please tag me on Instagram. I'd love to see it. Stay tuned for another Christmas tutorial coming up next week and I'll see you in the next video.